Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, turn discuss further into parametric equations and look at uh, further into that laboratory project which I've been covering in my previous videos. And now look at part three of the running circles around circles laboratory project. Again, the laboratory projects are a very interesting math math projects at the end of some of my chapters, some of the chapters in my calculus book. Now we'll go over part three, which is question three. So I went over questions one and two in earlier videos, so check those out. So let's go to number three. It says, now try B equals one, A equals N over D. And again, this is for these parametric equations for the hypocycloid shape, which is formed when this inner, inner circle rotates around this big circle and it's inside of it. And we traced a point on this P, uh, no, I mean, this point P on this inner circle curve like that. And then uh, I derived these equations, and now uh, we're given that try making b equals to 1, and then a equals n over d, where it's just a fraction where n and d have no common factor. That means you can't divide these so it's the lowest fraction, such as 1 over 3 or 2 over 5, etc., that they can't divide evenly out. So, and then also states first let n equals 1 and try to determine graphically the effect of the, of the denominator d on the shape of the graph. And then uh, later says then let n vary while keeping d constant and then what happens when n equals d plus 1. So let's look at the first step where we let n equals 1 and then b is equal to 1, a equals 2, n over d and then we have these equations there. So let's look at Q3. We have, uh, yes, we have B equals to 1, and we have A equals to N over D, where this equals 2, because we're given, uh, we're given N equals to 1. This just equals to 1 over, over D. So N is equal to 1, like that. Yeah, so this means what we have now, if we want to plug it into the x and y equations, we have a minus b is equal to, well, 1 over d minus 1. So we have this, and then we could throw that a over a minus b inside here, and divided by b, that's just 1. So this, this also equals to, well, a over uh, 1 divided by 1, which is just the same thing as a over b over b. So this is the same thing as a minus b over b, where b is equal to 1. So then we can just throw this inside. So recall, again, the x equation is going to be a minus b, which is 1 over d minus 1, like this. And then we have cosine theta plus b, where it's 1. So then we have cosine. And then we have this 1 over d minus 1 times theta like this, and then our y equation is going to be uh, same thing, 1 over, uh, or similar, so we have 1 over d minus 1, that's a minus b. This is going to be sine theta minus sine theta, and then we have right here, 1 over d minus 1, and theta, like that. Yeah, so now that we have this equations and I've uh, plotted these out and inside this uh, yeah, inside this very popular and uh, just quite amazing Desmos calculator and I've, if you click over here and here what I've uh, created is the parametric equations. Here's the x coordinate of it and then there's the y and instead of theta I put t just because you can't put theta inside this calculator. And here, instead of putting 1 over d minus 1, I just put n there, and n is equal to 1 here, and I have d equals to 2 for this case. And again, like always, I would usually put a second formula. It's the exact same thing here, instead of, uh, but instead of t, I put z, just so we can move this around. And this, is, this uh, plots just the point on it. And again, you play the animation. You can see rotating around. It goes back and forth. And I have the uh, range of theta or or z or t as negative uh, pi to pi, I'm um, to, to 2 pi. And also here, t is between negative pi and 2, uh, negative 2 pi and 2 pi. And then if you play this, and you'll see how it changes. I'm going to lower the speed here. So as you see what happens, the shape is pretty much the same, but it just shrinks as you increase d, like that. And you can even see it's increasing, increasing, 
and then uh, yeah, decreasing when you increase the d value. But again, if you have d equals to one, you have this point there. If you show label, just a trivial one zero, and if you have it zero, there's going to be no no answer to it or nothing practical. So only practical ones if you have it like this, and then you could slow this down. And now we could keep moving it. So yeah, you could play these animations. These are quite amazing. So that's for the first part. And uh, here I've copied and pasted it. So setting, yeah, just fix that up. Uh, so basically setting b equals to one, n equals to one, and the range to be, yeah, the range to be between uh, a negative two pi and two pi here. That's this. Instead of t, we have t is the same thing as theta, as well as z for the bottom one here just to uh, just for just to point that out so we get the following curves for varying values of d and here I've uh, copied and pasted graphs for d equals to 2, 3, 4 and 10 so what we end up having is a a which equals to n over d is the, in this case is 1 over 2 and we get a curve that looks like this it looks like a sideways heart or apple like that and then for the same range when we increase it to 3 we get a shape looks like this this means a is equal to n over 3 or n over d which is 1 over 3 we get a shape like this and as you see it's just getting smaller and smaller here a is equal to 1 over 4 and then here I have it for 10 you can see it's much smaller I, I made the axis the same uh, same domain and, and uh, range just to get a perspective on it and this is a is equal to 1 over 10 like that. So, so over to now notice how the graphs maintain the same basic overall shape, a sideways heart or apple, but the shape gets smaller as d increases. Also note that the spiral begins to extend past the sideways heart shape as d increases. As you, as you can see this this spiral is increasing more and more as you're increasing. This one, yeah, so this one is uh, it's about a quarter of this apple or heart but now here as you see it's overtaking it and then if you go back up it's barely any and when you have it uh, as d equals to 2 it's just a full loop like that and and now let's go further and also what you'll notice is that uh, increasing uh, the number of spirals also increasing so and thus increasing the number of spirals uh, in the process as well and this was more clearly shown when we changed the range so for the range negative 10 pi uh, between yeah, theta is greater than and less than 10 pi, which is the complete uh, a loop for when n is equal to 10, I mean when d is equal to 10. What we have is looks something like this. So we'll, we'll just go here and change it. So if we change this to uh, 10 pi, and here we change this to 10 pi, yeah, we get a shape that looks like this. And then we can change this. Yeah, as, as you can see, that's the full loop for the 10, and you could even go and change this. Let's go to pi, go something like that. If you go to 9 pi, it's not full complete. You have a sh missing shape there, and let's go to 10 is the full one. If you type more than it, let's say 100, it just loops around again. You get a darker and darker uh, image. Let's just go back to races. Yeah. That's like frozen, I think, as it was too big, too many calculations there. So you have something like this, and you can change this and you'll see it change, etc. So it's just moving around like that, which is pretty cool. Like that. And here I've copied and pasted that. Yeah, I copied and pasted it here. So there's our formula over here. That's again the x coordinate, this is the y. And we have a shape that looks like a heart. So it's the same uh, for different range for when d is equal to 2 or a is equal to 1 over 2. And then you see a shape that looks like this, which is quite cool. And here I quickly just change up this uh, this screenshot because I didn't have the full formula. But here is when we have a equals to yeah. one over three, or d is three. It looks shaped like this, where we have a spiral go extending at once like that. And then when we have uh, d is four, we get another spiral that goes around it again. And then when we have finally uh, d is equal to 10, we have a lot more spirals like that, which is a pretty cool shape. So now let's look at the part in the question where it says, let's keep d constant and change n. So what I've done is, well, first let's try d equals to 2. 
and then change n and see what happens. And then where n, I've, I've increased it from 3, 5, and 7, uh, with the ranges between negative 2 pi and uh, 2 pi like that, and positive 2 pi. But uh, I've went 3, 5, and 7, and that's because since d equals 2, we can't select n to be an even number if we choose d is 2, because that would make n a factor of d, which, would, which the question states d, and n over d has no common factor, i.e. it is already in its lowest form. For example, uh, we were given that uh, they had no common factor as, let's just scroll up. So in the question, it states here, where a fraction, yeah, a equals n over d, a fraction where n and d have no common factor. And now again, we're, we're going to find out, we'll let n vary while d is constant. The next part is n equals 2, d plus 1. So it's no common factor, so we can't choose an even number if we select d equals 2. Well, this is past it. If we select d equals to 2, we can't have common factor. Otherwise, if we have it, let's say d equals to 2, if we have 4, for example, this can split up and then you'll have 2. So that is a common factor of 2, so we can't have this. So moving forward, here's some screenshots that I've had, but let's just go here and show, your, uh, show that ourselves. It's a pretty cool shape like that. But yeah, whoops, that's not what we we're trying to solve. We uh, initially selected 2. So we have, so if we do, this shape looks pretty ridiculous like that. But let's go with uh, d equals to 2, and then we vary n. So again, if you have um, n equals 0, 1, you have a shape like that. But my calculus book just looks at 3, 5, and 7. So when we do this, we get a shape that looks like this. So we have a, initially, we have. So we have this three cusps uh, shape, like, uh, shape like this, one, two, three. The cusp is whenever you have this sharp point. Increase it to five, we get a star with one, two, three, four, five uh, cusps. Then go to seven, we have a seven-sided star again. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And then you could, uh, again, play around with it, see what happens. So for all the even ones, you get weird shapes, but then when you increase it by, um, Let's slow it down. When you have the odd one, like 9, you have 9 like that. 10, it just, I mean, 8 is a uh, weird one. But the, yeah, so when you just look at the non-common factor ones, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., you get shapes like this. So I've copied and pasted them here. Here is where d equals to 2. Or in other words, a is going to be n over, n over d, which is 3 over 2, like that. And then this one is a star, a equals 2. 5 over 2, and again, there's no common factor. You can't divide those out. Evenly, it's its, lowest, uh, it's its lowest form of the fraction. And here is a equals 2, 7 over 2. And what we have is, well, 7 cusps. So when d remains constant and n varies, we get a graph with n cusps, assuming n over d is in its lowest form. So n is equal to 7 here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And same thing here, we have 5 there, and the previous one we have 3. So now the next one was when we, what happens when we allow uh, n equals 2, so, so n equals to d plus 1. So what happens at this point? So if we have this, then what we have is a is equal to n over, over d, which equals 2 uh, d plus 1 over d, which equals, so you can simplify this, that's just going to be 1. Uh, d over d is 1, and plus 1 over d. But we also know that b is equal to 1. So if b is equal to 1, then what we end up having is a minus b is equal to 1 plus 1 over d, that's this, minus b, which is 1. That, that just cancels, we're left with 1 over d. And then a over b over b, this just equals to, well, 1 over d divided by 1, that's just going to be 1 over d. So this is the same thing here. Now what our new formula is going to be x is equal to a minus b, which is going to be 1 over d, cosine theta plus b, which is 1, and cosine a over d theta, like that. And our y is going to be 1 over d sine theta minus b is 1, so that's just going to be like that, sine 1 over d theta, like that. So that's our new formulas. And what I've done here, I've set up a new Desmos calculator, just varied this so we have 1 over d like that. And I click this, you could just click it and see what happens.
So yeah, we get a shape like this. This is for the range negative 2 pi and uh, 2 pi. But if you have d equals to 2, two so we vary d. When you vary d, n varies as well by n is equal to d plus 1. So n is going to be 3 in this case. So we have this formula like that, just 1 over d. Same exact thing. You could play this as moves along like that. And uh, yeah, so just keep uh, you could just keep playing this and then change this as well. But here, as you notice, the loop, uh, the 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 full loop isn't closed uh, when you change the d value. So let's pause this. So d is equal to uh, equal to two. The full form is is I mean the full loop is closed. But then here, when you increase it, you need to increase this as well. This one, if you I think if you put three. So you basically have to increase that every single time. So it'd be negative three pi to three pi. Then it fills up. You go to four. You're gonna need to increase it more. And then finally to ten. To increase this, you actually need to increase this to ten. So you notice it goes to halfway. And then this one's gonna be ten, like that. So we have a star shape like that. And the number of cusps is if you count them here. For example, here we have five cusps, which is uh, 4 plus 1, so d plus 1, that's just bn. So n cusps the shape. So as d increases and hence n equals to d plus 1 also increases, uh, we get a hypocycloid of n cusps. But we also need to expand the range of theta as we increase d or n in order to get a closed curve. So here is from negative 2 pi to pi, this is uh, d equals to uh, 2, or n is equal to, well, d plus 1 equals to 3 in this case. So if one, two, three cusps, so n cusps. Here, if we have d equals to four, n is equal to five, so we have five cusps there. Finally, if we have 10 here, n is equal to 11, and you can count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 11 cusps like that. And yeah, and you could even write that down, so 11 cusps, and uh, just quotes, uh, quotation marks. So that, that's what these terms are called whenever you have these stuff like that, those sharp points. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you follow along. Uh, this pretty interesting video on graphing and uh, changing the values. And, and you could do some other crazier stuff with this. You could play, uh, yeah, you could change these. And you could even play around with this range. You could change it, make it negative, and see what happens. See, negative 10. Let's see what happens here. So you get crazy, crazy shapes like this. And then you could vary this. Everything just goes yeah, ridiculous like that. And you can slow it down and play around with it and see what happens when you change the values. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Look at this shape. That's a pretty cool shape as well. Oops, let's go back to that shape. Let's go back to it. Yeah, so this is a very cool shape like that too. So anyways, you can play around with it, get some ridiculously cool shapes, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend always playing around with that Desmos calculator. It's uh, one of the best calculators I've seen in my life, actually. And this is all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.